Hello, welcome. I'm Chris Barclay, the Product Manager for OpsWorks, and thank you very much for joining us today on our webinar about continuous integration and deployment. Um, we're going to show you a few features we just launched um, last week as well as part of this webinar, and um, look forward to uh, telling you a little bit about the service first, and then uh, jumping right into a demonstration. So uh, just a quick uh, background, and uh, feel free while you're uh, doing this, while I'm speaking, uh, if you have any questions uh, or any problems, please uh, use the chat feature in the uh, side panel uh, to just send us um, your, your questions or, or comments. So OpsWorks is a DevOps application management solution. Um, if you develop or manage applications, you know they can be pretty complex. Uh, and not just the code, there's operational responsibilities too. These tasks need to be predictable. There's nothing worse than trying to diagnose an operational problem in your live application. You want to be able to configure and control any aspect of your app. And you need a tool that's powerful and flexible enough to support a wide range of application architectures. You also probably want something that's easy to use. Now, once upon a time, we used to handcraft our environments. Everything from provisioning hardware to creating database tables, and that can be nice when you have the time, but it's hard to ensure repeatability, and especially at scale. What we really want is to have consistency as we scale, and everything's going to come out to be exactly the same. And so how do we do this? Well, we use recipes to describe how to configure our environment and automation to ensure consistency across all of our resources. So you might think of code as really the output of what your developers create that runs your service but it's also the configuration of your environment and the servers of the software runs on. Making sure that all this code works together and is predictable is an important aspect of coding in the cloud. We developed OpsWorks for you. OpsWorks is an integrated application management solution that brings together the a la carte solutions offered by AWS. It brings together all the tools you need to manage your application. And perhaps best of all, you only pay for the resources that you use. OpsWorks itself is free. So what are the benefits of using OpsWorks? Well, simply put, OpsWorks makes your life easier because it's simple. It includes a management console, CLIs, and SDKs, and built-in support for frameworks and common tasks. It also makes you more productive. It provides an integrated experience to model and reproduce the application configuration reliably. It's flexible. It supports a wide variety of application architectures in any software that has a scripted installation. It's powerful. It includes an event-driven configuration system with support for customizable deployments, rollback, patch management, auto-scaling, and more. And finally, it's secure. We've created default security groups so that you don't have to worry about setting those up yourself. And you can extend this with you on your own as well as manage IAM user permissions with fine-grained permissions like sudo and SSH rights on the instances per user. So it's probably worth covering the AWS deployment options so you understand what OpsWorks provides. Each option provides a, a choice of flexibility, speed, and control. AMIs are fast to boot, but they can take more time to bake in your changes. Tools like the Elastic Beanstalk let you take advantage of pre-configured AMIs and dynamically update your code. And then OpsWorks lets you build from a base AMI and layer in your changes using Chef recipes. So let's give you a little bit more background on each of the application management services that AWS offers. I'll briefly introduce uh, what each application management service does and describe how OpsWorks is different. And it really comes down to the level of convenience and control that you need. Elastic Beanstalk is an easy to use solution for building web apps and web services with popular application containers such as Java, PHP, Python, Ruby, and .NET. If you want to upload your code in Go and don't need to customize your environment much, Beanstalk may be for you. On the other side, CloudFormation is a building block service that lets you provision and manage almost any AWS resource via a domain-specific language. It's powerful, but it requires you to author templates in that domain-specific language, and it doesn't provide out-of-the-box functionality for applications like deployments. AWS OpsWorks is a powerful end-to-end -end solution that gives you an easy way to manage applications of nearly any scale and complexity without sacrificing control. It features an integrated experience for managing the complete application lifecycle including resource provisioning, configuration management, application deployment, software updates, monitoring, and access controls. So let me just take you through a little bit of what we're going to show you in the demonstration. We're first going to model our application, 
starting with a stack that contains all the resources we're going to use. Next, we'll create a layer. A layer is a blueprint for how we configure the EC2 instances that we're using for a common purpose. We're going to create a PHP layer for our PHP app. Then we'll create some instances and deploy our application onto it. Now, our application, like many, needs to connect to a database for persistence. Now, how do we create and configure the database and then make sure our app connects to it? The old way would be to create the database tables by hand and bake the connection information into our application code. But this is error prone because you can miss a step or later forget what you did when you need to recreate it. And so what we really want is for configuration information, um, such as user creation and all the metadata about the database, to be managed like our source code. That way we can always roll it back if there are changes that don't work. And fortunately, Chef gives us a way to do this. So OpsWorks triggers events during the application lifecycle, such as when your instance is provisioned or an application is deployed. And this lets you perform specific configuration tasks using Chef recipes that are attached to those events. Metadata is automatically generated by OpsWorks for such information as the instances that are running in a layer and layer-specific parameters. You can also specify metadata yourself that's passed to the recipes. Let's take a look at an example recipe. So we probably need to connect to our database table for all the information our app is going to generate. And we could do that by hand, but we'd like to automate it to ensure repeatability. So we write a recipe. The recipe would be brittle if we hard-coded information like the username and database name, so we define it in metadata and pass it to the recipes. Chef takes the metadata and plugs it into the recipe. We can see, for example, that the uh, deploy my PHP app database uh, becomes uh, root in ABC XYZ, and then that gets put into the command below. Now, let's talk a little bit about the demonstration that I'm going to show. We're talking in this uh, demonstration about integrating your development pipeline to improve reliability. So you can automate your entire, entire build process, first deploying to a staging environment that mirrors production, and then when your integration tests pass, deploy to production. You can easily spin up parallel production environments and migrate traffic incrementally so it, it's easy to roll back if there's problems. In this demonstration, we're going to show making a change inside a Git repository, having that kick off a, a Jenkins build and integration test, and then automatically deploying that to staging. We'll then come back and, and talk a little bit about how you might uh, kick that off to production. So our, um, our environment looks a little bit like this. We have uh, Route 53 that's managing an, an A record for our, um, our environment. Um, it points to an ELB, and that ELB points to um, instances in our app server tier, and then they connect to uh, MySQL database. And you could use uh, RDS MySQL database or uh, run it on, on an OpsWorks layer, whichever you prefer. So let's just go ahead and jump into the demonstration. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, add a stack. Let's call this my um, test stack. And we have a choice of operating systems. We can choose Amazon Linux or Ubuntu. Uh, we can choose the region we want this stack to be built in. We can choose the default availability zone, which we can override later, and we probably want to for our PHP app server tier, so we can have multiple servers and different availability zones all being routed from our ELB. We can choose to have a default SSH key for all the instances in our stack, or we can assign um, SSH keys for individual users, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. We can choose um, what we'd like to have for our, our, um, our storage. Do we want to have an uh, instance store or use EBS? And then we can choose to point to some custom Chef cookbooks. And that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to um, show you the Chef cookbooks we're going to use to get these instances configured. And here's where my, uh, my cookbooks uh, reside. So I'm going to go ahead and um, get my uh, Git URL here and paste it into uh, my repository URL. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, come down here and add the stack. Now the next thing I want to do is create some layers. And so the layers that I want are things like um, the app server, so I'm going to use PHP since uh, that's the application that I've written. I also can set up other um, layer types. So I, for example, could uh, create a Ganglia monitoring server, uh, memcache servers. These are really, as I mentioned, just uh, templates for um, how I'm going to be setting up uh, 
um, the instances that are associated with this layer. So I'm going to go ahead and add the layer. And I'm going to go ahead and create some instances that are associated with this layer. So I can go ahead and uh, create uh, instances of, of various sizes. And I'll go ahead and add this instance and get it started. Now let's take a look at uh, what the layer is in a little bit more detail so that we can understand what OpsWorks is doing for us. So a layer consists of a number of built-in chef recipes that OpsWorks handles on your behalf. Uh, and this gets the basic setup for the instances for the particular layer type. So you can see, for example, that OpsWorks on the setup event, which is when the instance is coming up, um, installs some, some things like Apache. And, uh, and, and in that Apache, it actually uh, installs PHP. And if we were to click on this, we could see the actual recipe that OpsWorks is executing for us. So if you're kind of curious about what OpsWorks is doing, this is all available in, uh, in GitHub. And you can take a look at exactly what OpsWorks is doing with the built-in recipes. You can also um, put your own custom chef recipes in here if you want to extend or, or change the behavior of the layer. And we're going to do that in this instance. We're going to go ahead and um, take a look at um, the PHP app uh, recipes. And we have uh, an app setup recipe, which basically uh, will configure this application to talk to my database. So let's go ahead and we'll add that to, uh, to the stack. And we can also see some other parameters that I have for my uh, layer. So I can choose to have an elastic load balancer that I've configured, load balancing traffic for my layer. And uh, as I mentioned, we're going to we'll, we'll be doing that for this demonstration. I can also attach EDS volumes to instances in my layer. So if I need persistent storage and I want to have it, it mounted at a certain place, like vol data, then I can go ahead and um, select the mount point, uh, what RAID level I want, um, how much storage I want per disk, and just click that, that Add button. And uh, then new instances that are created in this layer will, will have the, the, that characteristic. It'll have a, an EBS volume created. I can also choose to have elastic IPs associated with these instances. Now, this probably isn't uh, very necessary since I'm going to put an elastic load balancer in front of these instances, so I'm not going to bother with assigning any EIP, but, uh, but that option is available for you. And then we can install various operating system packages that aren't already um, handled by OpsWorks. So maybe, for example, you want to install um, you know, uh, MySQL client or something like that. You can go ahead and, and type uh, those package names in and, and add them, and OpsWorks will, will go ahead and take care of installing those packages for you as well. You can see that we have a default security group for, um, for this layer type, and um, you can go ahead and, and add additional security groups if you want. Um, or you can, of course, um, change the behavior of these security groups uh, inside the EC2 security group um, console. And um, there's something called auto-healing, which allows us to, if the instance um, uh, for some reason stops functioning, uh, we can go ahead and, and stop and restart this instance, which um, for a PHP app server um, is a fine thing since uh, you're basically horizontally scaling these. So let's go ahead and we'll, we'll save um, the, the changes I made to this layer. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, apps. So now that I've configured the software for my EC2 instance, I'm going to want to deploy my app, um, my app or apps to that PHP app server. So let's go ahead and, and um, configure uh, my app. And um, it's a, a PHP app that's going to be um, going to my PHP app server. And uh, for my uh, application, my document root is at web. I also have the stored in in a Git repository, but I could be using um, my own Git repository. I don't have to use GitHub. I could use, uh, if I have Git, you know, maybe uh, located inside my own data center, I could connect it to that. Um, Subversion. I could also use um, HTTP or, or S3 archives. Um, so it's, it's very flexible, the, the repository types that you have. And of course, if we don't support something here and you want to um, still use it, then um, Chef gives you a, a very wide variety of ways to to go ahead and uh, pull your, uh, your source code down as well. So that's another way to do it. So here's my, um, my app source code. So I'm going to go ahead and um, get the Git uh, URL for this as well and paste that right into my repository URL. And um, then we can see that um, if I had this in a specific branch or, or revision number, I, I, could, I could type that in here. And so that's how you could move from um, 
uh, release to release is uh, by, by changing the, uh, the revision number. And I'm going to go ahead and, and um, create add an app. So now that I have my app and uh, I have my, my um, layers, let's talk a little bit about um, how I can get this app onto my instances. So what we'll want to do is we'll, we'll want to create a deployment. So we can deploy this app to, uh, to my instance or instances. So let's go ahead and uh, I have a stack that's, uh, that's already kind of up and running. Um, let's take a look at, um, at how I could do this. So basically I could do it manually by clicking on this deploy an app button and this would let me deploy my app to uh, the instances in my, in my, um, for, for my PHP app server tier. But what we want to do here is we want to automate that. And so instead of having to come to this screen and do it um, each time, um, like, you know, I, I wanted to make a deployment, instead I've hooked it up to my Jenkins build system. And I've hooked Jenkins up to my, my, um, my GitHub repository so that there's events triggered when I, um, when I make changes, uh, make, when I check in my code. And um, so this allows me to kind of have a continuous uh, process for my staging servers. And so let's go ahead and we'll, we'll uh, show how all that works um, by going into my source repo and uh, making a change. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at my app.php. Uh, um, let's take a look at, um, at what's currently been deployed. So if I go back to my environment here, we can see on my layers that I have an ELB that's um, that's connected to my PHP app server. And um, this, um, this um, ELB excuse me, um, is, um, is, is the way I, I'll want to go ahead and, and connect to, um, to those instances. And I, as I mentioned to you too, I have uh, Route 53 that's uh, connecting to that ELB. So let's go ahead and just go to my, um, my ELB uh, excuse me, my Route 53 C, uh, a, a record, and uh, we can see that that just connects to my, my uh, uh, ELB and then therefore to the, the instances running in this layer. So now if I wanted to change this, maybe make it a little more emphatic, so I, uh, let's go ahead and just change it from being uh, a series of, of dots there after your thoughts to uh, being something like an exclamation point. Uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, just make that simple change. I'll uh, change that. I'll go ahead and commit the changes. And now that commit should, have, uh, should be kicking off a build um, in Jenkins, which I can see that it is. And that build basically is going to go through and um, you know, run integration tests that I've defined. And assuming that those tests pass, then it's going to kick off a deployment in my OpsWorks layer. So let's go ahead and, and uh, take a look at, uh, at what's going on in OpsWorks. So let me click on deployment. And we can see that indeed there is a deployment that's been kicked off. Um, so let's go ahead and click into that and see what's happening. So it's deploying to um, the PHP um, uh, instance that's, that's inside my PHP app server tier. It's also sending an event to my DB master. So I have um, my SQL database running um, inside OpsWorks. And um, you might be asking, well, why are we sending a deployment of my PHP app to my database? Well, going back to what I mentioned inside the presentation where we're actually sending events to those instances. It doesn't necessarily mean we're going to deploy the PHP uh, application code to the DB master. We're actually sending a deploy event there because you may have some custom recipes that, that may need to do some different work uh, on, on deployment. So now that we've um, seen that this deployment has succeeded, uh, let's just go ahead and go back and we can refresh our, um, our app. And we can see that uh, somebody's uh, added, uh, thank you, um, some, some additional comments. Um, let me go here to our instances. I don't see that our, our, whole, our code got uh, fully deployed. Well, we got the, the, the kickoff of the, of the event. I'm not quite sure why we didn't uh, get our, our code deployed. To take a look at that uh, subsequently. So, I mentioned that, um, that there's some additional um, capabilities in addition to ELB that we wanted to, to show you. And um, one of the other features that we added was, was monitoring support. And so 
here we can see that um, you can you can see a bunch of information about um, the instances that are running in your layers. So we can see, for example, the uh, the processes, the load, the memory used, the CPU for each of the uh, layers that we have. So we have a static web server layer, a PHP app server layer, a MySQL layer in this uh, demonstration. We can also dive down into um, the specific layers to see what's going on with the instances. So I clicked on that and I can see that I have a couple instances that are in this layer. My uh, app server 3 is, is actually currently stopped, so that's why there's no, no data inside there. Uh, perhaps if I were to change it to um, you know, two weeks worth of data, we could see if it uh, was running during any of the, that time. Doesn't look like it was. Um, we can also dive into the specific um, instances so we can see uh, more detailed data if we wanted to see it. And um, we can see that there's actually quite a few different uh, metrics that we're collecting here, so things like memory uh, used, memory cached, memory free. Um, so this can help you when you're trying to take a look at how your instances are running. And because all this is sent to CloudWatch, you can actually set up alarms for this. So perhaps you might want to alarm uh, if CPU utilization is above a certain level or if memory um, usage is, is above a certain level. So CloudWatch gives you the ability to set up those alarms. You also, as I mentioned, can set up the ability for particular users to SSH into the instances. And what's nice about this is that if you have a team member that ends up leaving the project, um, you can instantly re uh, remove their access to SSH or perform pseudo actions on those instances. So you don't have to have a single SSH key for all the instances. Um, instead, you have user-based SSH keys. Now, let's kind of um, go back um, to show you a little bit more about what we want to do in this, uh, the next step for this demonstration. So you probably don't want to have a continuous uh, pipeline for your production servers. Instead, what you might want to do is um, create um, a new environment um, when you're ready to deploy a uh, substantial change to production. And so what we can do in, in this instance is what we call a blue-green deploy, where we stand up a duplicate um, um, set of infrastructure and slowly cut traffic over to it via DNS. Um, so what we want to do here is we'll, uh, we have our existing environment that uh, is currently uh, serving up traffic. And um, then we want to start, um, we want to basically clone that environment and start um, routing a percentage of our traffic over to it and see how things, monitor our metrics, see how things run. Uh, we've already performed all of our integration tests, so hopefully things are, are going to work. But uh, as we know, things can um, sometimes, um, you know, not work as we expect them to in production. So here we're kind of doing it in, in a uh, small way by uh, using Route 53's feature to let us just route uh, a percentage of our traffic over. As we gain confidence, we can start routing more and more traffic over to our, our new environment. Um, and then, uh, of course, when we're um, fully ready, we can go ahead and uh, route all the traffic there and, uh, and turn off our old environment. So this is kind of a safe way to kind of move from um, uh, one version of an application to another in production. And uh, Opsworks give you, gives you a pretty easy way to do that. Um, we can let you do that basically by, uh, by cloning your environment. So if you come here and click on clone, um, you can just go ahead and clone your entire stack, um, the permissions, the apps, um, basically everything about your environment. And, um, and then you, you can attach a new ELB to that copy. So you'd, you'd um, take a look at your, your layers. Um, you'll go ahead and um, add a new ELB to that. And then you go to uh, your Route D3 control panel and um, start routing traffic to that, that new environment. And of course, it would be a, a percentage of, of uh, your users is probably what you'd do at first. Um, or you can route all your traffic over and keep that second, that, that first environment up and running because you can always just switch traffic back. So let's go ahead and um, let's say that we had uh, kicked off a, uh, a deployment to, uh, to this environment with uh, the changes that we, we'd made. So again, this is deploying um, my app code from my uh, source repo to my app server. And I could, of course, have multiple um, app servers in my layer. So if I were to create additional new app servers, then those would um, get the same configuration as I uh, had configured before. And then as I add my app servers to, uh, as they come up, at, uh, up and running, 
Um, ELB has the feature where it has a health check that's uh, monitoring uh, when those applications are actually up and online and available. So I, I configure a health check that, um, that uh, makes sure that those applications are, are indeed running uh, the code that I want them to be running. And ELB is periodically monitoring that health check. So if for some reason those apps go down, they uh, automatically get taken out of the, uh, the load balancer and I don't have to worry about um, uh, them serving bad traffic. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll take a look at, um, at this and we can see that it has the new version of, of my app. Um, so if I want to, I can go ahead and uh, go into, I can go into Route 53 and, um, and uh, cut over to, uh, to this version of the app uh, like I would mentioned inside the demonstration. So hopefully this gives you a, a good summary of, of how OpsWorks can support uh, continuous integration build uh, by having Git uh, automatically event, um, for example, your continuous uh, uh, your, your build server, and so you could kick off builds automatically when you have new um, new check-ins to your source code repo, and that lets you always be running tests on things that are getting checked in, so you don't have to worry about um, you know which uh, which check-in uh, broke your build. Um, you could also be running your uh, your integration tests in your staging environment, um, so that you have um, full confidence that uh, everything that's being checked in passes all your your integration tests. And then when you're ready, you can go ahead and, and uh, clone your environment um, in production um, and deploy the new code to that cloned environment and then gradually cut over to that new environment. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and um, take questions. Please feel free to use the, uh, the chat feature there in the right-hand corner of your, your screen. And, um, and I'll go ahead and, and uh, answer questions uh, at this time. So um, oh, first question is um, plans to support um, other configuration management systems other than Chef. Um, so we, what, this is actually uh, one of the things we, um, we questions we've heard frequently. It's, it's um, uh, we, we answer, we've answered this um, in, in our frequently asked questions. We, we want to be very customer focused um, for everything we do. And so um, we're, we're very open to supporting uh, other configuration management systems as well as other features that customers need. Um, the primary way we get um, broad customer feedback is through the forums. So there's um, a couple threads in the forums already for other configuration management systems. So I encourage you to kind of search in the OpsWorks forums and uh, plus one on the ones that you want. Um, if you don't see the one you want, then feel free to start up a new thread. So um, uh, hopefully that answers that question. On Elastic IP, a question is, will every box get one? So the, the answer is if you configure the EIP uh, setting in that particular layer uh, to, turn, to, to, uh, to yes, then, then every uh, instance that you launch in that layer will get an elastic IP. And so it's really a configuration setting on the layer, and then that layer is really a blueprint. So every instance that you bring up will have exactly the characteristics of what you've defined in that layer. Um, So the question is, is there a way to flag a, a deployment as automatically, automatic versus that somebody uh, uh, pushed the button in the UI? So at, at this point, um, there's not a specific, um, not a specific way to, to, uh, to show that. Um, the, service, um, the service does give you quite a bit of information about um, the deployments, though. In fact, why don't we, um, I probably should have uh, shown that um, for each of these deployments, there you can get quite a bit of detail on the deployment, such as what user ran it. Um, so the, the way you could get information on whether this is an automatic deployment is you could see the user that it was run by. Um, so the, if you're if you have this through a scripted uh, user, then then you would see that it was through that uh, that scripted user. So that's kind of one way. Uh, the other is we have um, some very detailed logs that you can bring up. Um, this doesn't relate directly to your question, but uh, it's something that probably I should have mentioned just for um, looking into errors or, or configuration problems that, that, you, that if you were to have them, um, it's very easy to kind of get logs of what's happened during that configuration run without having to jump onto the boxes. So, um, so we can kind of give you uh, some insight into who's uh, performed each of the configuration actions because um, we, we do at least note the user that's performed it when it, when it was kicked off and, and when it completed.
So a question on um, um, ELB setup and, and Route 53 changes, are they, can they be done manually or, or um, uh, automatically? So the, the um, ELB setup is um, indeed something you would do through the ELB uh, user interface, and then um, you can uh, automatically associate ELBs uh, within the OpsWorks console. As far as kind of configuring it to work automatically as part of um, a continuous integration and deploy uh, pipeline that I've shown you here, you would need to uh, kind of script that yourself using the um, SDKs uh, or CLI uh, at this point in time. Question about support for BPC. Uh, today, OpsWorks supports um, uh, very basic BPC options. We, we support um, the newly launched uh, BPC uh, for Everyone, which was uh, announced um, in the blog probably about a month ago. And uh, we only support uh, launching instances in the default subnet. So if you want to launch in, in multiple subnets that's not supported at this time, definitely one of the things we hear uh, frequently from customers and one of the things that, that we would like to address uh, in the uh, near term. So um, basic support today, uh, more support later. A question of do we also provide a host of Jenkins? We do not provide a host of Jenkins at this time, but I created this Jenkins um, in my own uh, OpsWorks stack. So basically what I did was I created um, um, a static web server layer, and then I um, added um, a Jenkins uh, recipe to my layer. So basically the static web server is just an Nginx um, layer, and then I just uh, used uh, some Jenkins um, chef recipes to install and, and run Jenkins uh, on that layer. So we don't have that as a built-in today, but it's just an example of how you can extend OpsWorks to um, to install other types of software packages. Question on adding Postgres as a database to OpsWorks. Um, so you know, as I mentioned kind of in the beginning of the Q&A, we, we really want to be super uh, customer focused and um, there's a Postgres thread in the forums. would appreciate you, you know, plus wanting that if, if that's something that you want. Um, we really appreciate the feedback from users and, and are using that to prioritize our roadmap. Um, question on talking about custom apps and layers in terms of deployment. So um, you, know, you can kind of think of this Jenkins as a bit of a, of, of a custom layer. It, it, it's um, customizing an existing layer. Um, I could have created a, a, a completely custom layer. So if I wanted to, um, I can create a layer type that's, that's custom. And basically, it lets you um, install all of your own software. Um, so what this is good for is if you have something that you don't feel like you can extend an existing layer, you want to just kind of build from scratch, the custom layer lets you do that. Um, in this instance, for Jenkins, I, I actually wanted to use a you know, web server, and so Nginx was pretty handy. Um, so either way, you can, it, OpsWorks gives you a lot of um, extensibility options to get the software that you want installed. So a question of deploying from multiple repositories. Um, the, this person's application consists of multiple applications coming from different repos. So um, there's a couple things that you can, you can do. One is that um, you can create multiple apps here. Um, so for example, I could have uh, my PHP app could be coming from the repo that I showed you. You could also create another PHP app which comes from a different repository. Um, so you could, you could do it just by creating multiple apps. You, you're not limited to a single app. The other uh, option, depending on your use case, is you can use um, chef recipes. So for your layer, um, on the PHP layer, you can see that there's this deploy event. And deploy is what gets kicked off when um, you actually trigger a deployment over here. So you could actually just create a, a chef recipe which pulls from uh, the source from each of your repos and then performs whatever installation steps are, are necessary. So either way is kind of how you could um, uh, deploy from multiple repositories to a, a single layer. A question on can we use our own um, AMIs? Uh, today that's not possible. Today, today you need to use the, the AMIs that OpsWorks provides. Um, but um, that's kind of another area that uh, we're hearing feedback from, from customers and um, definitely would appreciate uh, if folks on this uh, call 
uh, if that's useful for you, um, please do feel free to um, let us know in, in the forums about your use case, and, and uh, we, we do appreciate that input. Question on will this deck be shared? We, we will be sharing this deck. Uh, an email will go out um, subsequently with um, information inside um, this presentation. A question on this uh, AppSwork support EBS optimized instances. Today uh, we don't. Um, the instance types that we support uh, just use standard uh, EBS uh, volumes. So uh, if EBS optimized instances are useful for you, um, I've taken a note that, that you want it, but if there's others on the line that, that would like it, um, please do add your votes to, uh, to the forums. So a question of how did you get your database instance information to the app instance? So um, the, there's kind of two uh, answers for this. One is if you're using a built-in uh, layer type, uh, then Opsworks will, will do that for you. So uh, if you create a MySQL layer inside of Opsworks, then um, the MySQL connection parameters and, uh, and uh, username information gets passed automatically as metadata to your app server tier. If you want to use RDS, um, what, what Opsworks gives you is the ability to pass in custom configuration settings uh, through the stack settings JSON. So you can see that I have some custom JSON here that I'm passing into uh, my Jenkins. I can actually pass in uh, connection parameters to my RDS instance in the same JSON. And so in that way, I can go ahead and, and connect to my RDS database uh, as well. So a couple questions about Windows. Um, you know, certainly um, a, an area that, um, that um, we're interested in getting input on. So um, a few questions of folks asking about Windows support. Um, there too, please do kind of add your votes in the, uh, the forums for, for Windows. Um, we, uh, as, a, as an organization, you, you probably have seen that uh, AWS is making a lot of investments in Windows. Um, we we uh, want to support every uh, type of application development community out there. In fact, there was a, a really nice uh, announcement just a week or two ago uh, with additional system center integration. So uh, today, uh, OpSource does not support Windows, but, uh, but organizationally, we're, we're very big uh, Windows uh, proponents. Um, and uh, so uh, add your votes, please, to the forums for, for Windows. Question of adding um, ELB via the OpSource interface to an instance. So the way that uh, OpsWorks supports ELB today is we associate elastic load balancers with layers, and then OpsWorks takes care of um, adding and removing the ELBs that are associated with that layer to your elastic load balancer. So if I start up a new instance in, say, the PHP App Server layer, like I were to start up this stopped instance, let's just go ahead and take, take a look at it. Um, so I have two instances here. I'll start this up. Now, as soon as this, um, this app server comes up, we'll go ahead and associate it with the ELB. So you don't have to worry about manually associating instances with ELBs. OpsWorks goes ahead and does that for you. Um, but um, you wouldn't be associating it manually with, with ELBs. You, we just automate that, that process. And then, of course, the ELB does the health checks on those instances. So uh, as you, uh, if they were to, for some reason, go offline, then uh, traffic would, would stop routing to those instances until they became uh, healthy again by passing the health checks. Question on, is there a way to send ad hoc commands to some or all instances? Um, you can do that. Um, so deployments, if I wanted to uh, deploy an app or run some sort of command, um, I, can, I can choose the instances that I, I send those to. So for example, um, I could choose to send them only to some instances, instances in a particular uh, layer. I could choose to send it to uh, only particular layers. So um, it's very easy for me to customize how that deployment uh, runs. So it gives you a lot of flexibility on, on how you want to do your deployments, if you want to do it in batches or, or, or whatnot. And then, of course, the deployments, once you've actually performed them, 
um, there's this log of, of the deployment of which instances did it deploy to, what the success status was. Uh, you're able to see the logs for those and, and uh, everything else. Question on do EBS volumes persist across auto heals? Uh, and uh, the answer is, is yes. So one of the things that's, um, that OpsWorks does for you is these instances um, uh, retain all their characteristics um, even after they've been terminated. So if, if I were to, to basically terminate, uh, stop, stop this, this instance and then start it up again, um, it'll have the same Elastic IP, it'll have the same, uh, if, it, if I had attached Elastic IPs to it, it'll have the same um, volumes associated with it. So um, you don't have to worry about trying to reassociate Elastic IPs with instances even if you stop and start them. And the same is true for auto-healing. So if an instance gets auto-healed and, and gets restarted, then you'll get the exact same uh, information um, attached to that instance. So it'll, it'll look and, and behave exactly like the original instance. Uh, does OpsWorks support reserved instances? We, we do. So basically, OpsWorks instances behave just like uh, EC2 instances. They're, they're EC2 instances under the covers. So um, uh, basically, the, all the reserved instances FAQs apply to OpsWorks. Uh, it's all handled by billing um, on your behalf, so uh, your reserved instances are just associated with those OpsWorks instances that are running. So um, that, that just about answers most of the questions there. Um, oh, one last one, but not spot instances, and that's correct. Uh, we, we do not support spot instances today. So I um, really appreciate um, everyone attending today's um, webinar. If, if um, you have additional questions um, or comments or feedback, uh, please do feel free to uh, jump into the forums and, and ask your questions. Uh, we, we do look forward to uh, getting your feedback on, on uh, how you're using OpsWorks and any additional comments on how we can make OpsWorks better. Um, thank you very much. Uh, just to let you know uh, how to get in touch with us, um, we are on the web oops, at uh, amazon.com, it is amazon.com slash OpsWorks. Thank you very much. Have a good day.